through uh, this book. It's a challenge. I've never preached through the book of Job. And so it's a journey that we're going to take together. But um, I know that by the grace of God, we'll be able to get a few things that he wants us to learn. We'll not be in a hurry. We'll just take it uh, as slowly as we can so we can get those lessons. And therefore, I'll encourage you to join in this journey. Uh, take notes wherever you can. Write insights that the Lord reveals to you. Um, share with others what the Lord has revealed to you either in, in this um, setting right here or even in your own personal time as you speak with the Lord. And uh, let's encourage one another. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercies and the blessings that you bring our way. Thank you for your encouragement. And thank you for the reminder that you're with us. We offer you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. The book of Job is actually um, considered to be one of the oldest books in scripture. Although the authorship of uh, this book is still uh, under contention, many Bible scholars believe that it was written by Moses. And so it becomes um, an additional book to the five that we know are written by Moses, uh, the Pentateuch. It tells us about a man. And this man, uh, his name was Job. The Bible starts by giving us the wonderful uh, character traits. He is blameless. He is upright. He fears God and he shuns evil. Nowhere does it say that he is sinless. But the fact that the Bible says that he is blameless and upright means that he is a man, he is a person that values integrity. Uh, and integrity basically is uh, treating people the right way, being the same person, whether others are watching or not. I was listening to a person who was talking about his business um, in Kenya, actually. And he said that his business model uh, is uh, based on one word, integrity. And the interviewer asked him, you know, why did you, of all words, why did you pick integrity? And this is what he said. He said, in Kenya, and I will also say, yeah, I think also in many parts of the world as well. But in this context, he was talking about Kenya. He said, in Kenya, you will beat out half the competition if you have integrity. In other words, you might be selling the same product as everybody else. You might be in the same industry as everybody else. But if you have integrity, you've actually killed half the competition. What he was saying is uh, people are you know, um, quick to make a quick buck. Uh, people are, will cut corners. People will do what they need to do uh, to gain a quick advantage. But he says, for me, what I say is what I'm able to do. If I'm not able to get this done in a particular time, I will not sell that. If I'm not able to get this done by a particular time, I'm not going to give my client that promise. And I think it's a good thing for us, even as Christians, uh, to adopt that. Job was a man who was blameless, who was upright. He feared God and he shunned evil. Then the Bible tells us about his riches. And this is important, as you're going to see later, why this is pointed out. And not just the riches, it talks about his children. His children, there were many, and they used to work together. Verse 5 says, For it was when the days of fifteen had run their course, that Job would send and sanctify them, and he would rise early in the morning and offer burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus Job did regularly. I just want to point out two things here. One of the things that points Job out and he's able to stand, and one of the things that we can learn from him is the importance of worship, especially family worship. I would like to encourage you, my friends, uh, brothers and sisters, to restore family worship. There's something that happens when we get together, either in the morning or in the evening, or even both times, family, spouses, husband, wife, father, mother, children, pray together. It doesn't have to be long drawn out. But in the morning, these children are covered with the blood of Jesus as they go out. 
uh, and not just for the physical protection, but also spiritual protection. There is so much that the enemy is trying to instill in the minds of these children. There, there's so much that they're having to compete with, you know, uh, in this information age. Uh, you know, you remember uh, in your time growing up, uh, the only probably competition was the newspapers that were being sold along the streets. But but right now, with just the click of a gadget, the button of a gadget that they're carrying, the entire world is open to them, uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Job will do this. There was time for family worship. But there's another thing here that I will say that's important. He did this regularly. There was consistency. Uh, I'm reading a certain book, and the answer is a book on prayer. And the author said, and I'd like someone to put that in the chat, please. I'll, I'll say it twice, or even thrice. The author said, if you pray regularly, irregular things will start happening on a regular basis. Let me say that again. If you pray regularly, irregular things will start happening on a regular basis. If you pray regularly, I'll keep saying it until I sit in the chair. <laughs> if you pray regularly, irregular things will start happening on a regular basis. My friends, what a privilege. What a wonderful, wonderful promise. The Bible says that Job did this regularly. And that's why the regular things that are happening in his life regularly, the riches, the blessings, will be there for him. And how many times have we missed out on this because our prayer life is hit and run here today, gone tomorrow, uh, on fire right now. And then gone when we're facing situations, even when we for, when we when we when we forget or when we're distracted. Verse six tells us there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. The Lord said, "Satan, from where do you come?" So Satan answered the Lord and said, "From going to and from the earth, and from walking back forth." on it. I need you to understand what's happening here. The time of worship is in the, in the celestial setting. And Satan, who is a usurper, uh, he is not supposed to be the representative of planet Earth, but has usurped planet Earth from Adam and Eve, also comes as an ambassador or a representative of the planet Earth. And so God engages him and he says, where have you come from? And he says, from going to and from the earth. Basically, he's saying, now listen to this carefully. This is what he's saying. I have traversed the length and the breadth of the earth looking for someone I could tempt, looking for someone I could mislead, looking for an opportunity to sow mischief, looking for someone who could sin. That's what I've been doing. All right. All is good up to that point. Oh, we know the devil, you are the accuser. You are the one who causes mischief. You're the one who looks for people to mislead, to tempt. And that's all right. But then the problem with the book of Job starts right here in verse 8. There are a lot of theological problems. I'm reading verse 8. <laughs> and God is saying, Have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on earth, a blameless and upright man who fears God and shuns evil? God, why are you bringing this up? For some reason, you know, Job was not seen. You know, Satan has traversed the entirety of the earth, the length and the breadth of it all. Why are you bringing him up? <laughs> uh, but we need to know 
that God is proud of you and your efforts to connect with him. There's nothing as good when God can brag about you. When God can say, I have a young man in that Pony University who has integrity. There's a lady in that Pony University who fears God. There are several students who are, are graduating. They're going to be medical doctors or they're going to be lawyers. And I have one there or have two, I actually have three. Those ones are good. They're going to work with integrity. They fear God. They're blameless. I have several business owners. And there's one of them there who does not cut corners. God brags about you. Said this one, this one is a good one. And so if you um, read this on the uh, surface level, you might say, well, why bring him up? But God is bringing him up because he knows Job can handle anything. But then look at verse 9. Satan answered the Lord, and now Satan is accusing God. And he says, does Job fear God for nothing? In other words, he says, he is actually accusing God, all right, of what God has done. Basically, he's saying, this is what Satan is saying. You have bribed him. God, you have offered Job a bribe. And this is how you've bribed him. You've made a hedge around him, around his household, and around all that he has on every side. You have blessed the work of his hands, and his possessions have increased in the land. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Do you know there are some times when it's actually Satan who gives a testimony? This is Ushuhuda. This is testimony time. This is now Satan who is giving a testimony. He says, listen, let me tell you about Job. There is a hedge of protection around him. There is a hedge of protection around his household. There's a hedge of protection around everything that he has. Now, let me ask you a question, which you've already asked yourself. How does Satan know that? How does he know that there's a hedge of protection around Job, around his children, his household, and around everything that Job has? How do you think Satan knows that? Someone can put that in the chat. How do you think Satan got to know that? Right? We don't have much time. So thank you. He tried. Uh, he's been trying. He's been trying to penetrate that hedge of protection. But he has been unsuccessful. He's frustrated. But now let me ask you the question, which ties with something I shared before. Why hasn't he been successful? He's not been successful because of the regular prayers of Job. Job prayed regularly. There was a hedge of protection around him, around his household, around his children, around everything he had. And then Satan now says, and God, you've blessed the work of his hands. <laughs> Even uh, the, the, the kingdom of Satan knows this one, this one is blessed. Can't touch him. But then he says, but now stretch out your hand and touch all that he has, and he will surely curse you to your face. And you expect God to say, no, we won't do that. We're not gonna play that game. No, I'm not gonna do that. That is what we expect. But verse 12, God says, well, behold, all that he has is in your power, only do not lay a hand on his person. God, why? Why are you setting him up? Why have you given permission? There's no answer. There's no answer. The Bible says, and Satan went out from the presence of the Lord, and we can imagine him with his sinister green. No, now let's see how this will happen. 
I'm going to finish here today and then we'll pick it up on Friday. Continue. But one thing that you need to know is that Satan is there. He's an instigator. He's an insider. He has evil plans. Woe is to the person who thinks that they can play with the devil and something good will come out. Nothing good will come out. That's one. We have an enemy. He's an instigator. He's an insider. And he has evil plans. He is real. We, do, we cannot see him, but he is real. And the only way to handle him is through the regular prayer. That's one point I want to share. The second point I want to share with you is that um, there are some trials that we endure. We don't deserve them, but God permits them. We know what's going to happen, but Job does not know what is going to happen. More so, he does not even know why it is going to happen. In our lives as well, there are some trials we endure. Some of them are very painful and they shake you to the core. But God has permitted them to come your way. And it's only in eternity that we shall look back and get an explanation. Why God? Why did you allow this? But for now, all that we know is that as long as we're in his hands, God has permitted this. He has a plan. We may not know what that plan is, but it is for our good. And even saying that sometimes can sound harsh. How do you tell someone who is bearing a child, oh, this is for your good? How do you tell Job when he looks outside and he sees 10 freshly dug graves of his children, oh, this is for your good? And so while we know that truth in us, sometimes we have to be careful that we don't use that truth to comfort someone else, to encourage someone else, because it may not come out as comforting. There are things that we will go through and we will not understand completely until we make it to eternity. Jesus says, in this world, you'll have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. John 16, 33. In my human mind, I would want him to say, in this world, I will shield you. You will have no tribulation. In this world, things are going to be all right. And things so on, there'll be no trials. But Jesus says, you'll go through it. I'll give you the strength. You'll go through it. Be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. The way I've overcome, you too will overcome. Let me finish by saying this. The reason that Satan is after Job, he is not after Job's um, wealth. He is not after Job's health. He is not after Job's um, whatever. And get this, and someone can put this in the chat. He is after Job's faith. He is after Job's faith. He wants the relationship between Job and God to be disconnected. And that's why he said, just let me, let me go through him. And then he will curse you to your face. Friends, whatever we are going through, what Satan is after is after your faith. And that's why Jesus will say to Peter, Simon, Simon, Satan has desired to have you that he may save to you as wheat. But I've prayed for you. Oh, thank you, Jesus, you're praying for me. What are you praying for? Are you praying that I may not be sifted? He says, no. I've prayed that your faith will not fail. You'll be sifted. You'll be shaken. You'll go through it. But what Satan is after is after your faith. But I've prayed that your faith does not fail. And when you're converted, come and strengthen your brothers. Uh, my friends, my brothers and sisters, whatever happens in our lives, let's hold on to that faith. And let's pray that our faith is not shaken. Um, we'll be together again on Friday as we come to see uh, what happens when Satan goes out from the presence of the Lord with this sinister grin and he wants to steal Job's faith. 
and we'll see how he goes about stealing it. Until then, the Lord keep us safe in him. It's my prayer today in Jesus' name. Amen.